Meandering river facies contain three components that combine together make up the typical deposits associated with meandering rivers. So they're the, the channel deposits where you have the more rapid flow. They're the floodplains that uh, represent low flow and a lot of um, or biological activity. And then the oxbow lakes that form in these uh, abandoned meandering channels. So the base of the channels has the highest flow and so they almost always are erosive. And they have the coarsest grain size. But in most cases, except for very large meandering rivers, the coarsest grain size is occasionally pebble, but more likely to be granule or very coarse sand. And as the bars migrate, uh, the, the, uh, the sediment going upward binds. So we have the coarsest sediment deposited again at the base of the channel. And then as it finds upward, it's equivalent to going um, up the side of the point bar. We can use Walther's Law. We have the base of the channel, and if we go up one side, it's erosional, so we have the erosion on the bottom. If we go up the other side, the grain size is fine upward. And so let's say they go to fine sand, and then we hit the, the, the top of the channel flow. We have the coarsest grain size and the fastest uh, flow speed, so uh, we might have, say, upper planar lamination here with trough cross stratification. If we have all of them, we might have some planar uh, cross stratification representing straight crested dunes. And then we end up with our current ripples at the shallowest part and slowest part of the flow on the point bar. So this represents, this part of the sequence represents the migration of the point bar. So basically what this, what the sequence tells us is that we have a, a river channel migrating through with erosion on one side, the deepest, fastest flow uh, next to that erosion, and then um, the, s the flow slows down as the channel migrates past. And this is the point, this is where you would see what we call scroll bar stratification, which sometimes if you have a really nice space, you can see uh, variations in the flow and you can see the geometry of that, that point bar. So I'm gonna give us a symbol over here that shows that we see that uh, scroll bar stratification. Okay. So this represents a channel deposit here. Okay. So once the channel migrates away, we can get the, the floodplain. And so most of the time there's very little sedimentation except for maybe some accumulation of, of uh, dust from the air and uh, occasional flood deposits. So we end up mostly with mud, but sometimes it's dry, sometimes it's wet, and when it dries out, we can form mud cracks. And then we have the soil development and the roots uh, coming in into the floodplain. Right? So occasionally the floods will bring in some sand, and so you may end up with a sand layer. Let me make it fine sand here. And I didn't uh, do a symbol for climbing ripples, but we'll do climbing ripples. All right, so here, this would be a flood deposit. Right. 
And that would also be part of the floodplain. All right, so this would continue up. Uh, and you could redevelop your roots in this zone here. So this is also part of the floodplain deposits. Okay. So then maybe we have another channel migrating through. And then say that this part of the channel is abandoned. Right? So we end up, we have the lower part of the channel. Maybe this time we just have our trough cross stratification, maybe a little bit of planar lamination. So this is one channel again. But then um, at this point right here, the channel is abandoned. due to the merging of, of uh, two meanders. In that case, you don't end up with a second part of it, and you end up maybe with an oxbow lake forming right above it. So the lake deposits will, are gonna be very, very fine grained um, with some mud, but then a lot of organic matter. And so I'm going to show, I'm going to do uh, coal as a big dark area here. So maybe there are bands of coal where you have very little mud coming in. And then eventually the lake will fill in. And you might start getting some mud cracks and root casts again. So this part here would be your oxbow lake. And then at some point here, it's not clear exactly when sometimes you go back to having your floodplain. We can, we can define the uh, subfaces as the channel would be uh, have an erosive base. The maximum grain size uh, that finds upward with a sequence of sedimentary structures that also shows a slowing down of the flow speed through time. Um, and we could include this channel and that facies as well, even though part of it is missing. So we might include, if it's very common, to say the upper part of the channel migration process is not always preserved. For the floodplains, we would say that we have, um, it consists of mudstones with mud cracks and root casts and rare uh, fine sands with climbing ripples that represent flood deposits. The represent flood deposits would be part of our interpretation. Then our oxbow lakes would be mudstone and coal uh, lacking mud cracks and roots to distinguish it from the floodplain. So those three components all add up to being the types of things that you would look for to determine whether it was a meandering river environment in the ancient rock record. Thanks for watching.